Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast. To join a global community of financial advisors sharing and learning with one another to drive the positive evolution of financial advice, head to xyadvisor.com. This podcast is brought to you in partnership with Hub24. Hub24 make a difference in the lives of advisors by connecting you to innovative solutions that create opportunities with market-leading managed portfolios and customer service excellence. Want to know more? Visit hub24.com.au. G'day, Clayton here from XY, and uh, to wrap up 2020, which was the year of many different things, I uh, thought we'd invite our good friend Kate onto the podcast. Thanks for coming on. Clayton, it's so great to be here with you. Wrapping up this year, I think most of us are ready for this year to be over. So let's go out with a bang and be ready for the next thing. Yeah, I fully I fully agree. Um, it, it, it's sort of as we get down to the end of the year, um, I feel like... Uh, I guess most of the year I was in a little bit of a pretend land, I guess you could call it in my mind. You know, I, I just sort of, you know, head down, bum up and just got the work done. Um, but I, but if I sort of was to reflect, uh, it has been, uh, you know, a little bit of a, a stressful year for many reasons. Um, now you've obviously yeah. got, uh, a, a, you know, a great podcast over there in, in the US, but you have, it's very at globally, you know, gl- globally minded. Totally. Yeah. Um, and so you're speaking to advisors all over the world. So I thought you're probably in a really unique position to sort of talk about, you know, what you've found in terms of financial advice and the and and COVID and working from home and remote and stresses and you know running a business and dealing with clients and all of that sort of stuff. And it's, I guess, I couldn't think of a better person to do that uh, than with you. And I guess I'll start off with asking high level. What do you think has, what's the big takeout for, for 2020 in financial planning? Well, I'd say two things, which I am totally taking from people I've talked to recently and kind of had like reflecting on the year conversations. And one of them was uh, Sabrina Lowell that I had on my podcast recently. And she's like, look, the business word of the year is pivot. Mm -hmm. So we'll do a shout out to Ben Nash. He already had that (laughs) built in, but it is, it's all about who can pivot. And in line with that, I had a conversation this morning um, with a friend of mine, Penny, and she said, look, it's the year where everything has changed and nothing has changed. And I thought that was a great way to put it because, you know, working with advisors all over the world, the advisors that already had innovative forward thinking businesses have actually been incredibly successful. Even people who have started brand new businesses this year, if they've done it in a thoughtful way where they're engaging and they're emphasizing the human approach in this virtual world and they have their hyper-targeted niche, they are doing fantastically. But the advisors that weren't ready for this, that were resisting change, that were just like, hey, I'm going to stay in my brick and mortar with paper and our desktop computers, those are the ones that have really struggled. Wow, that's such a great way to put it. I, I I've experienced a similar thing um, in terms of the conversations that I've had. I think it's, it's been a, a tale of two experiences. Those that were already prepped, digitally minded, um, you know, niche or, or niche sort of focused. And then those that were resistant to change. I think that's probably a really yep. good uh, way to put it. And, and, and it's not like change is just this, super simple thing we eat for breakfast every morning. Like there's a lot of reason why people don't like change. Um, you know, hence, hence why people like you exist, you know, like you, 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 you help advisors move out of that stagnant position and into yeah. the new world, you know, that that's why, you know, you, you've been as successful as you have been. And, uh, and I think it's, I think it's normal to resist change, but I think in a normal world, you only suffer like say, mm, I mean, there's so many measurements, but it's not a material, what, what, it's, not a, it's not a significant, it is material, but it's not a significant disadvantage. You still can operate. You still can exist. You still can continue in a comfortable environment 
Um, but I guess COVID sort of turned around and said, uh, actually, what, uh, what those things that you've been holding onto is actually going to make you uh, experience a, a pretty negative side effect. And it has become uh, significant this year, though, those sort of that, that legacy, if you want to continue it, way of doing business. Yeah, I, I think that's a pretty accurate way of putting it. Well, and it's kind of brought to light. I mean, if you think about so many of the situations, things that were sort of inevitable. So in this case, it was a pandemic, but what if there was a major, you know, power outage somewhere? I mean, I do a lot of work in South Africa. They've still got, you know, rolling blackouts that happen regularly where they've got no power, no internet, no anything. What if it was a, you know, geopolitical situation, an earthquake? What if it was the founder got in a terrible accident and, you know, was no, like in a coma for three months, whatever it is, I think it just brought to light that businesses need to be better prepared. And even if you're resistant to change, what we should always be thinking about is the client first. So in any of those situations, what happens to the client? If the client can't get a hold of you or you can't service them because all of your files are paper or the building you were in burned down, right? It's all these permutations of the same eventual issue highlighted that really innovation isn't a choice, it's a necessity. Yeah. Um, tech was always, I remember when I started my company and this was 2013, right? Like we're not talking stone ages, yeah, <laughs> right. But even at that stage, uh, social media was a nice to have, uh, tech was, um, it, actually, no, I would say even social media was less than a nice to have social media was a, mm, an annoyance at that stage it's still, it's still kind of <laughs> yeah I know, okay, no, i'll pay that i'll pay that but in terms of like big business acquisition you're right it is still an annoyance but but it's still a valuable annoyance um back back you know, i i remember having my own business and then someone saying or someone talking about uh you know acquiring clients and engaging on social media and i was like whoa like this is this is a crazy concept um and then tech was seen as a, ah, yeah, you know, I'll put some tech in. But, uh, but now I'm not, I'm not sure what, what's happening around the world in terms of the cost to provide advice, but especially in Australia, that's sort of blown out of proportion, uh, or sort of blown out of control, I should say, um, and, and has become a large proportion of the advice yeah. fee is, is that sort of fixed cost. And so there's a, yeah, I guess there's a lot that's being revealed. Um, on one hand, I have a bunch of mates that have really suffered during COVID and then a bunch of mates that have done exceptionally well during COVID. And it really is just that mindset of where they were in the adoption phase of implementing technology into their company um, and being niched or niched. And, and, and that is that I think both of those are, are extremely correct. Um, in, in as far as the year goes for yourself. Obviously, it's been a big year. You launched the podcast at the beginning of the year, and it was awesome yeah. to be involved. Um, and you were the very first guest, so you I was, you helped me kick it off, Clay. Oh my god, uh, that, that's such an honor, and it really like genuinely, it was a huge honor. And um, and and I mean, you're already smashing it, right? Like I, I think you're doing a really, really good job. And so it's been a big year for you as an individual as well. Um, obviously, in, in in prior podcasts, we've discussed what you were doing beforehand. But um, maybe talk to us a little bit about how you've personally found this year. It has been really interesting, as it has for everyone. You know, my big thing is travel, and I love constantly being in different locations. And I actually work freakishly well in like airport lounges and <laughs> on airplanes. And there's just something about having that change of scenery and just kind of like some background noise and just like the mental and emotional good feeling of knowing that I'm somewhere different. Like I can sit in a cafe in Europe and, you know, be there for three hours getting work done. So being stuck in one place and inside my house and not being able to go anywhere has been um, challenging, even though I've actually spent just about my entire 15 year career working virtually. But I would say in all honesty, I am absolutely brilliant for having launched that podcast in February <laughs> because that saved me. Yeah. Like if I didn't have that, cause that gave me all the excuse in the world to be introduced to incredible people. I mean, if you would have asked me 12 months ago, like the people that I've met 
you know, that I feel like I could show up with a bottle of wine and be invited in, you know, COVID aside, yeah. that I'm like, there are people I'm like, they're, they're genuinely my friends and I can call yeah. them for things. People I've never met, like the level of community and engagement. Yeah. I don't know that I would have gotten all that strangely if we had all been in person. There's like everybody kind of slowed down in a way. Mm, yeah, the the world certainly opened up digitally, like in terms of America, UK, South Africa, in, in New Zealand, like a lot of these places all of a sudden just seemed reachable. Totally. Brazil, I mean, like, um, actually, I was going to ask you, uh, and, and no one ever has favorites when it comes to podcasts, of course, but is there a couple of conversations during the year that you feel like had a big impact on you? Yes, conversations and themes and just people that I, again, that I would not have met otherwise. Mm. And I'm actually going to be doing, I think tomorrow I'm going to record my year end. It'll kind of be a year in review and mm. looking at what the top 10 episodes were. And Clay, you're in that top 10. So you'll Stop get a, a special I don't, want to drag, I don't want to drag down the average. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was there, um, which was fantastic. And uh, you know, thinking back, I would say Dr. Mara Catherine Harvey, who is in Switzerland, and she like headed up UBS and did all these women's initiatives. So tons of experience. And she actually left and is kind of doing her own thing. And she has written like in the Dr. Seuss style um, books for children and especially little girls and teaching about financial matters and empowerment. And I had no idea that wow. kids like develop their, their confidence by age five and their financial knowledge by age seven. Like that blew my mind. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't that's, know. I, I had to repeat that like three times. I was like, am I hearing this correctly? That's, that's amazing. So, so, so I guess like someone's relationship with money is that kind of you know how they in terms of if they have shame around it or if they have uh, you know if it seems complicated or you know does it get sort of that psychological in nature or just in terms of like I can add 20 cent piece to a 50 cent piece kind of thing more like your sort of mental and emotional relationship to money so if you think yeah. like seven years that's actually a long time yeah. and it'll get into you know the fact that totally subconsciously parents will give their son a higher allowance than their daughter wow. or, you know, kids will hear parents talking about money or you'll have, you know, families that talk about it more openly or that keep it secret. And so those are like those money beliefs that actually get embedded in you at a very huh. young age. Yeah. That most of us never do the work to, you know, uncover. Yeah. 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 Um, that's super interesting. And, and so she, she came from a, like a, obviously a high pedigree finance background and then she'd what just done the work of the, on the psychological nature. Yeah. And kind of just partnered up with other people. And, and, you know, we know that we have all these challenges with engaging people in financial planning. And then even once you engage them, how do you actually get them to follow through on your advice and mm -hmm. create good money habits and, and so rather than trying to like, you know, tackle it up at that level, what she was doing at UBS, she's like, well, clearly there are more fundamental underlying issues. Let's look at what those are. And she's like, we need to be starting way, way younger. And when we're talking <laughs> sub age five or seven, that's about as young as you can get. Wow. That's amazing. Um, and so she's writing these children's books. I mean, I, I've got a little guy, so perhaps, uh, so yeah. what's the name, what's the name of the, uh, the book? If it comes to mind, I'm putting yes, you on the spot, by the way. I know the say, and I was just looking it up because I'm doing it for the. <laughs> I'll I'll give it to you and. In writing, we'll put it in the show notes. Well, yeah. Okay. We'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> Actually, speak. Speaking of uh, of of finance books, um, on LinkedIn, I've come across this book recently called "The Psychology of Money." I'm not sure if mm -hmm. this has come across your desk at all, but that should be um, Dr. Brad Klontz, right? Right. Yes. So the, yeah, I, I had him on the podcast. Stop it. Are you serious? Yeah. This, yeah, so this he's fantastic. This is this is the guy that um, I, I, I was reading on LinkedIn has a movie deal with his book. I've just read like someone's making a movie out of this book. That really? seems yeah, that seems insane. I just I can't believe it. I, I follow. <laughs> wow, I'm gonna have to look that up. Yeah, I, I follow him, and he's also um, like a bit of a TikTok star. So oh, for anybody it. listening that's on TikTok, follow him. He does the most fantastic TikToks, and what he's doing is. Because the people that are on TikTok are generally like teenagers. 
Totally. And they're seeing all of these people flashing around money and with their private jets and their right. Lamborghinis and their right. fancy watches. And he's basically showing that all of that is false. And those people are just going to stages in LA and, you know, renting that plane for an hour to take pictures. And he's like, don't yeah. believe any of this. Yeah. And so he's showing like the, what a true millionaire looks like. He's like, yeah. uh, it's not that don't fall into that trap. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, uh, it, it, in fact, one of the, um, the wealth editor of, of a very popular newspaper here in Australia called the Australian Financial Review, uh, Alex Vikovich, um, he recently did an article precisely on this topic, which is people teaching about money on TikTok and, and, <laughs> our, and our, um, our government, our, our sort of like agency that overlooks um, uh, you know, the, the financial services industry in, in Australia called ASIC they're really worried about it because now that there's this, you know, completely unsecure or, or however you want to think about it. Um, it's kind of interesting where social media and money meet. For example, there was a, there was a FinTech that launched here in Australia and one of their strategies was to, uh, you know, pay Instagram influencers money to promote mm -hmm. their fintech, right? And so it's kind of an interesting situation where in Australia, and, and, and I assume it's probably very similar around the world. Well, in fact, I know it is with the fiduciary duty. It, it, there's a level of responsibility when you're talking about someone's money that you can't just sort of pow, 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 shoot in the air. Right. However, you're getting, you're getting these sort of like, you know, these guys that, are, you know, working out 24 seven and these huge buff guys and these, and these uh, girls in bikinis, and they're just sort of going, Hey, you know, use this FinTech product. Right. And, and, wow. and there's no duty. They've just been, you know, given a bunch of cash to promote it. And, uh, and that strategy has did, did work for them. Um, I think it has a limited time, you know, a, a, a limited shelf space. I don't think it's a sustainable model, but certainly in terms of like a, a launch, this idea of like combining uh, financial education with just casual entertainment is like TikTok is kind of becoming somewhat normal. Um, is it going to, you know, produce a new list of problems? Probably potentially, but it's not like, yes. you know, the whole industry looks back on our very structured past <laughs> and goes, Oh, we have a, pristine you know a uh, backlog of, of of actions that we can lean on no like it's it, it it was just a different type of uh you know fraud i guess in in some cases you can call it but um but what do you think like where, where do you see advisors do you think do you think you know something like a tiktok is a legitimate way to to bring people through the door i think it can i think if nothing else you know if there are people out there like dr klontz i mean seriously, those TikToks, they crack me up every single time. And thankfully <laughs> shares them on LinkedIn because I'm not on TikTok. But having people out there that are helping to change the conversation and mm. make it so that people aren't only seeing all of these false senses of, hey, go day trade your money away or get rich quick schemes, mm. you know, that's totally dangerous. And if we as a profession don't have anything out there that's countering that, you know, it's unfortunate that we have to do that, but it's kind of a fail on our end. Mm. But if people are already on that platform, if you like creating TikToks, you may as well use it for good. Yeah. And, you know, there are people that are, you know, of working age that'll have incomes. You could get clients from it. You know, people get clients from YouTube and creating fun videos and you never know. I mean, there's, there's someone out there for everyone. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good way of putting it. Um, this year I interviewed, um, a guest, her name was Julia and, uh, she is an Aussie Aussie and, and, but she actually targets Americans. And this is the first time I've come across a, a, a an individual advisor who's going after a foreign market. And to, to me, that sort of blew me away, uh, because she's approaching money, uh, from the view that uh, so, so, so not dealing with the financial product and not earning any revenue through a financial product and just taking on that sort of that money coaching uh, yeah. angle. And, uh, and she said that she's achieved infinitely more success in the U S just with the size of the market and with the desire that people have to, I guess, uh, learn 
and, you know, and yeah. be educated. And, and I guess it's more of a, like the culture over there is much more along the lines of like, you know, you're an expert. Can you tell me how to do things? It's, it's much more sort of open in that sense, I guess, compared to maybe certainly Australia and, and maybe Britain as well, um, being a little bit more conservative, but she's, she's gone after the U S market. And, and I think the, when we were discussing this before about the world became a lot smaller and a lot more open because all of us adopted this idea that the international nature of things means that, uh, you know, literally we're having a conversation now and, and, and you're, you're in, I assume you're, you're at home over there in Vegas yeah. Yeah. and, um, or is Nevada or Vegas. Well, Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah. 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 Sorry. 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 <laughs> hey, I just learned the other day that paradise is an act like it's not just on a billboard. It's actually the name of a, a town almost that's, that's Here. connected to Vegas. Yeah. And it's not what people think is Vegas is not actually Vegas. Um, right. So the strip, so yeah. really people think of the strip, which is actually just one street yes. and you're right. It's not actually technically in Las Vegas, which yeah. Yeah, is always funny, but like, no, nobody knows that. Yeah. I, I literally <laughs> just learned that the other day. It was the most peculiar thing. Um, anyway, that, that was definitely a sidetrack, but, um, um, beyond sort of geographic anomalies, uh, I think, I think working with international people is a, is a super interesting concept. Um, what would you say your, the people that you work with, do you have kind of like, what, what kind of split are you finding in terms of, you know, native American versus, you know, or, you know, external uh, around the world? So it was actually my dad that just pointed out as I was talking to him about the different things I'm working on and places in Africa and the UK and Australia. And he was like, are you currently working with anybody in the U S <laughs> like, Oh, interesting. I've got all these different things going on. It, it didn't even dawn on me, but you know, I'm involved in things here and talk with so many people yes. and have a lot of guests on the podcast that, uh, that I didn't realize it, but I think it's just so fascinating. So many great things that are going on around the world and yeah. people that I've had on. And another one of my favorite interviews, honestly, was with Jess Brady and I just love what they've built at Fox and hair and oh, yeah. Oh yeah. All of the work they put into it in advance and the focus groups and just the entire approach. I was like, this is brilliant. Yes. Yes. It, it, and in fact, when, when I was sort of talking about my mates that have been doing well during the year, they, these guys are top of my end. So, mm -hmm. so it, it, a, a little known fact is uh, Glenn was a client yep. of mine, which, uh, <laughs> which, which, and I found out that those two were, uh, were going to launch a business and I'm like, I'm getting out now. There's no way I could compete. I'm just, nope. I'm like, oh my God, these guys are going to like take over the world. And, and in absolute, uh, you know, prediction, they, they've just done so well that they, they really niche down into, you know, what, I'm not sure if you guys call it over there, the pink dollar, the, the LGBT, uh, yep. and, and then also, you know, the, the women and, um, and they've done so well. What, what's actually really quite interesting is even though they've got an LGBT uh, tilt, they've actually got Christians that work for them. So they're even diverse internally, nice. even you know, awesome. with their um, with their ideology, which I thought was really interesting. I'm like, hey, you look, you you, you guys are super. You know, definitely practice what you preach. And um, I mean, they're just such fantastic people and and unbelievably hard workers as well. And uh, one of the interesting things that they do is they work on the weekend. So they, they schedule out every, I believe it's Saturday up to about 12 o'clock. They, they have meetings. Like that's just a part of their work week. Um, and yeah. you know, which I've never really uh, seen other financial planners do. So yeah, that that's worked really well for them. Yeah, they, they've done great. And I just talked with a woman that actually used to work in my financial planning firm and we've stayed very close friends since. And she just launched her own business in June. So wow. in the heart of COVID, oh, it, launched yes. it. And she's focusing on women in tech that want to start their own businesses. And she texted me about an hour ago and she told me she just signed up her sixth client this week. Holy damn. Right? That was exactly my response. I was like, Danica, you are amazing. And she just built an amazing brand. It's Xena Financial Planning. So she's going for like the Xena oh. Warrior Princess and has that specific niche and just built really great systems and processes. And I was like, what a fantastic example of, you know, again, launched in June. So it's not like she had anything before COVID. Insane. And she was like, That's nope. insane. Yeah. It's so cool. Oh my God. I take, is it actually X? 
N X X E N A. No way. What a legend. Yeah. That's yep. so cool. I'd love to see the logo. I hope it's like this, uh, you know, plated leather skirt or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, that, that is, that's phenomenal. Like sixth client this week. That this it week. does, it does, it does blow my mind. Like for, for this whole change that's going on globally with financial planning in terms of like tackling it as if it is a professional service done in a yep. modern way. I mean, it just goes to show that as the as the conversation shifts away from you know huge extremely you know uh, billion dollar multinational com- you know companies that have controlled the conversation around what financial planning is over the last few decades as it shifts from that yeah. it's the number of success stories is kind of amazing and there's room for so many Absolutely. more yeah yeah. And we need more and we need more people getting the word out just of yeah. what financial planning is. Like I talk to everybody I can just, you know, friends and friends of friends and, yeah. you know, if we're ever allowed to talk to anybody in public yet, again, like I like asking, <laughs> you know, do you have an advisor or financial planner? Like, what do you think they do? And so many people mm. actually have no idea that there is anything besides those big behemoth companies. They yeah. have no idea there are boutique practices. And so, yeah. you know, they either haven't worked with anyone or had a bad experience and that's really why, you know, Adam and I have been focusing on video and whatnot lately. And like that goes back to social media and TikTok. Yeah. It's like everybody's on video. They're consuming video. There are 2 billion monthly users on YouTube, which is the second biggest search platform after Google, right? Like everybody is consuming video content and they want it. Yes. And what an amazing way, like as we continue to professionalize and show that it's not just data gathering and numbers and analysis, like this can actually be fun and you can work with cool people that are like you. Yes. Let's spread that word through more video. I I fully agree. And what what you guys were able to do, I think is nothing short of amazing because if you think about the personality traits, whether male or female, I would say somewhat of a, it's a general trait amongst financial planners, but there is a level of conservativeness about it just because it, it's money comes with a small amount of tradition, whether you, whether you want to or not, there, there's right. almost like this unspoken expectation. Uh, you know, you, you, if you're going to work with money, then you need to, you know, look and act like you work with money. And, and it's this, it's, it's uh, I've definitely seen it as sort of this, you know, it's almost like the background hum of the universe, if you want to consider it that it's, it's, it's this, it's an expectation that gets built into you, whether consciously or explicitly or not. And, uh, and as a result, I find that financial planners typically have an issue with getting in front of the camera. Yes. And uh, when I saw what you guys were doing, you and Adam, in terms of a, a 30 day challenge with video, I was like, I mean, this is, this is a, big deal not just because it's you the the both of you which happen to be two of the most people that i respect in in the entire world when it comes to financial planning um but it's it's it, taking a group of people who are intrinsically uh terrified and then holding their hand and walking them through it you know as as a group and and i was like this is this is super interesting even from a psychological point of view. And I've, I've noticed it. I remember when COVID really hit and, and we thought, Hey, we'll do this like happy hour thing where we'll, we'll, ha- we'll put up some video, you know, everyone will get together and it, it didn't hit at all. And, and like, I, you were very nice one time. I think you stayed up to four 30 in the morning to, to <laughs> join us. <laughs> and, um, and, and what was really surprising to me is that uh, it wasn't popular even though it was an environment where it should have been. And then for those that came on, they were quite nervous as well. And, and it, it sort of, it dawned on me that there's this, there's some hesitancy when it comes to yep. videos and, and financial planners, even in amongst other financial planners, let alone making it public. And so again, going back to that idea, I was, I was like, wow, this is, this is a brave move. How, <laughs> how, how did you, for, 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 for both you and Adam, but also for the advisors that wanted to do it. Yeah. What was your experience like? Like what, what's sort of the takeout from that? That advisors are generally terrified. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yes, they're the same. Right. But it was actually a really interesting lesson to learn. And I'll admit that that did 
surprise us a little bit because yeah. we did the 30 day challenge throughout the month of November. So we we're already what, like eight months into lockdown. So everybody yeah. has been doing all these video meetings all along, Yeah, but I get it. And, and seeing that people struggled, I think it was a lot with, you know, confidence and comfort and everything. It made me think about a few different things. And one of them is that Adam and I both uh, do video a lot and we're experienced with it. And so we took a little bit of that for granted. And I just kept thinking, how often do planners do that with clients huh. and conversations we have? And it's like, well, I know all this stuff. Like, and I think that I'm bringing it down to a level that the clients know because it's, you know, whatever. And, and as we were laying out the challenge, we're like, oh yeah, there's a really good way to do it. And within the second week, we're getting feedback. They were like, this is too much information, too fast. And, and people stayed engaged and they stayed producing amazing content. But we're like, oh, you're right. Like we, we didn't thoroughly think about the audience and where they're coming from, like where they're actually starting out. I was like, and I think, I think we can tend to do that with clients as well. Yeah. 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 It, the, the, the video and financial planners, it is, there is, there's a, there's definitely hesitancy here. I mean, if you looked at Ben Nash, you wouldn't yeah. imagine, right? Like this guy lives. Well, I can't lives... see him. I can just see the beard now. <laughs> yeah. Aren't we? We're just all beard all the time. Exactly. <laughs> Especially with that camera angle. So it's like all hair. And you can just see his eyes poking out. Yeah. Ben, lift up that camera. <laughs> yeah, correct. Um, I was, because uh, we had our sort of deconstructed end of year uh, event tour the other day and, and, and both of us being, you know, you know, first time dads, young children, we sort of left at a reasonable time, which is, I've got to say is the first time in seven years uh, that we've been doing it. And then, um, and so we were walking home, the two of us, uh, and we're sort of chatting. Uh, and then I pulled up this LinkedIn comment that I had made on a post of his, where he was talking about, you know, money mistakes of the week. And I said, yeah, your money mistake of the week was, you know, not paying your barber for the last three yeah, years. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I was, I was hoping to, that, comment actually got more likes than his post and there was a, you know oh. unfortunately he's he's still pitting me at the post classic Ben always has to win but um but yeah so I I think there's there's some advisors who do it but the tr the truth is and this is the thing that people don't understand about uh Ben is because I've known him for a decade I'm, I I've known him when he was clean shaven like I've seen the whole evolution <laughs> of Ben. yeah yeah, he used to be baby face and uh, then he had a short beard and then kind of a long beard and now it's just out of control. Um, but, the, but the thing is with Ben, his voice speaking in front of more than three people, if you go back, um, I'd say even five years, it used to falter. Like it used oh. to, like, cause he was so nervous. Nervous, yeah. Yep. And, and then, and, and early, sort of early days with XY, he used to just put his hand up and say, yep, I'll, I'll, you know, intro. And I'd see him beforehand. Like he, he was yep. kind of like, I'm so nervous that I just, you know, went and had a shot of vodka. Right. Like just to, just so that I could handle sure. this. And, and it was like a group of like 50 people and, and he just kept doing it. And, and, and the idea that just because it's uncomfortable, it's impossible to do is, yep. is, bollocks for lack of a better term, right? Like it, he, he's absolutely proven that incorrect. Well, and he's proven the value of doing video and how it's helped yeah. in the business and in yeah. website traffic and engagement and social media engagement. And that's why, you know, Adam and I going into the challenge, like we had some other ideas, but we were like, this is fantastic. We had like a hundred people in there and just the community in there and people supporting and the videos yeah. we got the first week, just, it was so <laughs> great to see the variety of personalities and characteristics. And, yeah. you know, you were talking about that hum that we all have, like, I want to use and Adam and I want to use video to like drown out that hum. Yes. And be like you can and should be who you are, but now understanding where a lot of them are coming from, which I totally appreciate yeah. and relate to, you know, now we've designed a new three month program that we're launching on the XY wow. platform. Whoa. You know, starting in February. Cause we're like, okay, everybody <laughs> relax over the holidays, <laughs> take some time to get good, you know, yes, get yes. settled when you come back for the new year yeah. and we're launching February 1st and we're bringing it down into three months and wow. spending that entire first month, not talking about content that you'll use, not talking about lighting or camera, only practicing, just getting comfortable in front of the camera. Cause you just, you need to 
break it down. Don't try to do seven things at once. Just like don't ask your clients to change seven things at once. Do yes. one thing at a time and keep building on that foundation. And this is, this would be connected because, uh, because Emily, uh, obviously everyone knows that Emily runs, uh, you know, the the XY community and I'm not super connected to, to that part of the business right now, but is this to do with Adam and next gen doing their speaking uh, course that they do? Because that to me, like the amount of people that they've already helped around the world and so is yeah. there like a bit of an overlap with that? Yes and no. I mean, so the, the three-month program, anybody is welcome to join. If right. you work with advisors, if you are an advisor, if you want yes. to be an advisor, like yes. we are welcoming everybody in. And again, we're just bringing down in three months. So it's nice and slow. And that also wow. helps build habits more. Yes. But it, it gets into, you know, as people are like, hey, I, I want to become a speaker. How do I do that? How do I raise my profile? Video yes. is a great way to do it. And are going to see you on social media. And so they can definitely be linked. And then also that'll be where people go, Hey, I think they would be a good speaker. Maybe they need a little more training because it is very different. And that's been, that's been hard for me. Like I'm used to being on a stage in front of, you know, a thousand people yeah. and having to do completely virtual presentations has been super strange this year, especially a couple <laughs> of conferences I presented at. They've asked me for, you know, to make sure tech works to pre-record. And so recording where there is no feedback and I'm just listening to my voice for yeah. 45 minutes. With like, yeah, it's, yeah, it is yeah, so weird. Yeah. So weird. That, yeah. I, I, I can't remember the name of the actor. He plays Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. Um, yeah, his name escapes me. Yeah. Um, but he, I, I read an interview with him once and he hated acting in Lord of the Rings because such a huge portion of it was himself in front of a green screen. And oh, he was right. And he was like, this is not why I got into acting so that I could be, you know, in this sterile environment with no one to bounce off. And it sounds yeah. sort of similar to what you're saying. You know, there's this idea that you can perform or, or at least feel like you're adding value to people's lives with zero feedback when it's just you, you know, essentially practicing in front of the mirror in, a, yeah. a, in, a, in yes. another way of considering it. And I wonder if, I wonder if that is connected in any way to the hesitation with people doing video as well. I wonder, it just came to mind. Well, the other thing that, that I was thinking about is just seeing all of these amazing planners that are so passionate and have so much to give back and knowing that hum that we all have in the back of our minds is I feel like even if people don't necessarily want to put out video content or maybe they work in a firm the word, you know, compliance is too strict and you can't build your own profile yet it's still an amazing skill to have mm. because especially doing it within like the XY community and mm. seeing the feedback, people kept posting and they were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just hit post. And the thing is, you're not posting it on broader social media. You're posting it within yeah. a safe community and yeah. we're all hardest on ourselves. So totally. we were like, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. And then we'd all watch and we're like, that was amazing. And like, <laughs> I love that you did this. And it was great that that happened. And like, um, you know, and then it just builds that confidence. Yeah. And guess what? That confidence bleeds over into other things. Mm. And it helps you if you're doing virtual meetings with clients or with prospects, or it gives you more confidence to know that you know your stuff if you're asking for a raise or you're starting your own business. Like it just impacts so many areas of our lives. So we're, we're pretty excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it, it is amazing. And, and I think like, especially you and Adam, like two, two, I would say definite global leaders in helping to push this positive evolution of financial advice, like the hashtag, you know, a, value of advice, value of advice. Right? Yep. you know, it's, it's this, um, it's this whole idea that advisors have collectively decided that we're probably, um, able to run our own industry with, 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 without, you know, without sort of being dragged into a million different directions. And it's a, yeah. it's a powerful sort of moment in time. And it's awesome to sort of watch it unfold. And, um, I think, I think, just in terms of learning that uh, other advisors, because there's nothing to, uh, you know, there's nothing to be sold, but that it's also hard to get good advice. Um, so for example, like I have no doubt that the, that uh, your friend who used to work for you, who's now doing so well, yeah. 
would be a direct result of listening to you. Like it, it would just, it goes without saying because she would have worked with you. She would have watched what you've done. And there yeah. would have been a huge amount of conversations that went into before she launched. And then since she's launched, I mean, if she'd asked someone that works at a large financial you know, institution right. how to do that, they would have said, Hey, you know, sell this product. <laughs> yep. Right. And she would have been like, uh, okay. You know, like, <laughs> Hey, Hey guys, do you want this product? And it, and it's just, it's not, there's nothing wrong with products, but it just, it, you, you, I feel like the whole industry has been, you know, it's like the tail wagging the dog until now. And I feel like COVID has been a fantastic sort of moment in time where advisors have, have grabbed the reins of this industry and now sort of collectively making it happen around the world. It's been really cool to watch. It's been super cool. And I think we can just keep it going. And there are so many amazing things happening and the global collaboration that's happening. And you mentioned the speaker and influencer program, which is going to lead to a virtual global conference next June. And just seeing, I mean, it's, it's like seeing exactly what I thought a year ago when I was like, okay, I'm kind of like on an island by myself, but I know all these people around the world. It's like, I think we have a lot to learn from each other and collaborate. And it has been honestly so much better than, than I ever could have pictured. That's awesome. Well, look, it's been great to, um, cause we hadn't really spoken, I think before this year, and yet we've had heaps of conversations this year. And it's yeah. this, it's this whole idea of, of, of the world opening up and, 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 you know, everyone being connected and it's, there is definitely a silver lining despite the fact that it, I think we're all pretty much looking forward to, um, to this year being over. But as we joked about yesterday, I fear that 2021 is the year that Mad Max is, <laughs> is situated. <laughs> so, so let's hope that that is not uh, oratory in nature. Um, cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate you giving us your time. Uh, um, now, I know most of the people that are listening to this probably already know how to reach out, but for those that don't, uh, can you, can you let us know where to find more about you? Yep. So everything is at innovatingadvice.com. So the podcast is there. And uh, like I said, as many people as possible, love to have you in the three month video program. And you can find that at innovatingadvice.com forward slash ideal clients. Awesome. Very cool. Well, there you go. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for wrapping up the year. Again, I couldn't think of a better person to do it. And uh, yeah, keep going. Look forward to 2021. Likewise. Thanks, Cliff.